Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to a StarCraft 2 England cast. Today guys, I've got a game from Violet, who is the red Zergler in the top left, and the cool man, the blue Zergler in the lower right. That means this is a ZVZ, and it is just a ladder game, it is a high masters, low GM level game, and... It should be pretty damn fun. Of course, Violet, a great player, cool man, has been making stirs actually. And notably, even in games I've casted, he's picked off a few good names. So, yeah, I'm interested to see how he does. I really want to know if it's a smurf for someone because he plays really well most of the time. And this isn't like one of these unknown GM players who like comes up and just picks people off by cannon rushing or something like that. No, he's played some solid, straight up games and done exceptionally well. So um, do check him out on my channel. There's quite a few games from him. And yeah, we'll wait and see how this all goes down. But obviously, ZVZ, Ahana, I'm calling... 15 hatch because it's just really really strong because it's a narrow opening to your base it's quite a long rush distance you're pretty fine and pretty safe but obviously it is a ladder game and quite a few people don't like going hatch first on ladder just because what if they're six balling me which is always something to be concerned about now looking around obviously both of them are just droning up that's absolutely fine so let me use this time to say that this video should either be produced while I'm at I-47 or just before it. Of course, I-47 is from Friday, I believe it's Friday the 31st of November through to the 2nd of December. So basically, if you're around that weekend, check out the stream. If you're going, come say hi to me. I'm going to be casting and doing lots of observation and things like that. So, and also just generally having a ball of time. So do come and check that out. Obviously, follow me on Twitter to keep all the latest information. And if for some reason this video has got delayed in my release cycle and it hasn't come up by the time, after, well, if it comes up after the second, well, it was awesome. You should go and check all the VODs out because I'm sure it's been brilliant fun and I have no clue who's going to win. So... Guess guess you'll have to go and check that out because I can't give you spoilers. Anyway, looking here, both went for pool first. That's all good. The gas coming down for Violet. There, no gas yet for the cool man. The hatch, so it was um, pool, gas, hatch out of Violet. It looks like we're going to just be having a pool hatch from the cool man, which is absolutely fine. It's a good opening. Um, the gas just means you get speed out slightly earlier. It also means you've got the option of going to bailing slightly sooner, preventing any kind of super aggression. But both these players have scouted out the hatch. Since they have seen it, obviously you can see here, they both know what's going on, and as a result, they know that, well, it wasn't a hatch first, because it would be more done than that, and that means we've gone for similar builds. Here comes down the gas for the cool man, looking up here for Vila, we don't have too much on the way um, for either of these players, for the time being, that gas nearly finished up, he's getting his queen out, both queens going, zerging speed, just started though for... Violet there, so um, basically he's going to have his zergling speed out a long way before that of his opponent, and he has actually pulled all of the drones out there, so that is something to keep note, it could just be, this is a really common strategy actually, is you get that gas, you get the speed, you get the two sport, the two hatcheries out, cut drone production, and just go mass ling, that can be very very strong indeed, mass speed ling early on, especially if your opponent isn't prepared for it by having a baning list down, we've got 50 gas out for the cool man at the moment, he should start his spawning, uh, zergling speed shortly, and of course, this is still looking to be quite a dangerous strategy. We've got one, two drones back in that there for Violet, though, so perhaps we'll be okay. And this mouse, my Rat9, still isn't back at the time of recording this, so I'm having to use a cheap, cheap, like, £10 mouse, which is absolutely appalling and just occasionally goes to the other side of the screen for no apparent reason. But that is why I do love my £100 mouse, which is so, so good. And Mad Cats make amazing projects, uh, products. I'm just plugging them completely for free because I love those guys. Um, obviously I'll be seeing them at I-47 as well, hopefully, so go say hi to Mad Cats and all of those cool people if you're there. Anyway, Spinecrawler Baning Nest on the way down. No Spinecrawler or Baning Nest yet for Violet, who just seems to be getting quite a few Zerglings out, already up to 10. Speed is done, so this is going to be a nice little push, especially since Banings are not going to be on the field. It's going to have to be a good defense. That Queen needs to be in a very, very good position, such as here, where Zerglings can't surround it to make sure it survives. But obviously, more Zerglings on their way in. We've got 8 Zerglings coming in from the Cool Man, because of course the Overlords have scouted this coming through, and well, this has got to be a good defense. It's a good position to get in, preventing the superior Zergling numbers from engaging with that. It isn't a good position right there, and that is going to allow those Zerglings to do good damage again to the main base. They get away from the spine quarter, importantly. They might get a couple of drone kills, but again, the numbers have significantly dropped down to five. The cool man up there at ten Zerglings, so he should be completely fine in dealing with it. Second gas isn't down yet for either player, so both are sitting on one gas. The Baning Nest on the way down for Violet, because of course he scouted his opponent's Baning Nest, which means you need yours, really, or you've got to go straight to Roaches, which is a bit of a dangerous strategy. Workers killed only one actually killed by 
um, the cool man, no work is killed by Violet, who lost 350 minerals with that push, so it doesn't really seem to have worked out for him. Looking around the map, the baiting list coming down, the spine crawler coming down, that is all absolutely fine. The queen's injecting nicely. Both players just chilling on two queens, so none for creeps, but neither player actually have chucked down a creep tumor at all. And this is something that I think isn't really necessary anymore in ZvZ. Some creep spread to join the bases can be good. Or alternatively, wait till you just get up Lair Tech, which Violet is obviously starting now. You burn Overlord here. You burn Overlords just like round to your third base, and you generate creep. And then you don't have to miss a single inject, which is always great times. The Evo Chamber coming down there for Violet at the moment. The Cool Man getting up. Well, Violet rather getting up all four gas. The Cool Man just getting up his second gas now, going up to Lair. This could be a two base mute to play out of Violet. It's always a possibility um, when you see four gas early. Meanwhile, the Cool Man is getting up his Roach one. There we go, it's on its way down. So that is just to phase two of ZVZ, really. Phase one, mass zergling. Phase two, zergling baning. Phase three is getting up roaches. And then, of course, phase four is roach infester, roach infester hydra, etc. The alternative is, of course, going for a two base Mew to play. But the problem with that is you can just die, which is always quite concerning. I'm not quite sure where those drones went. What was going on there? Those drones just running away. Did I miss something? Looking at the Lost Tab, I think I did. What was going on? I was too busy talking about the phases of ZVZ. But anyway, here we go with the Roachron coming down. So Violet with an awful lot of money here, getting down his infestation pit as well. So just a really fast tech up to infestors, which really isn't a problem. As you're seeing here, the Cool Man demonstrating that strategy of avoiding creep spread I mentioned earlier. Violet sending in just that scout using a change in the third base coming up here for the Cool Man. And now this is going to identify something I really don't like from either of these players. No idea of the third base placement for either of them because neither of them have an overlord over there. That is something that is absolutely absolutely essential. I cannot believe they both oversee, um, not really react to that. Mass Zergling push coming over here though from Violet at the moment. Is there really anything here to defend? The answer quite simply is no. The Cool Man is getting five roaches out but luckily is forced to pull back because he sees these Zerglings and to be honest if that push had gone ahead that would have been absolutely devastating because the Cool Man just does not have anything in his army until those additional roaches pop out and it could even still be a very very strong push and we see the roaches kind of panic build here and well this is going to be pretty tough to hold and defend actually and this third base is almost certainly going to be forced to get cancelled because there's just so many Zerglings there. Banings are morphing but they are not going to be there in time. This hatchery almost certainly going to go down now and that is a big big problem because of course Violet, he's getting up his own third base there. That overseer has seen it though. Looking around the map, we've got these Zerglings running back, and that's the right thing to do. You run away, you do some damage, and then you run away and get back without losing too much. Plus one missile attack done for the Cool Man. Meanwhile, upgrades, none yet. The double upgrade's coming down for Violet, so he is going to be getting ahead just with the double Evo Chamber. This Evo Chamber doing nothing for the time being. You never really want to have building sitting around doing nothing. It never works out too well. Lost tab, nearly exactly equal. Only, what, 15 resources lost difference between them, so... Now it's really quite interesting. The worker count, the cool man, up to 55 for the 48 of Violet. Again, the 55 is a bit pointless at this stage until you get your third base down because of oversaturation. You only need two lines of drones per base. You can see the main base even oversaturated as well. So that's causing problems. Violet, less oversaturated. That means his lava is being used more efficiently at this time. But and that's really shown by the fact that he is really forcing his opponent to make lots of units. And meanwhile, he's just sitting there with some good infestors. His lava count must be pretty high. Yeah, we're seeing that up at 9. So that isn't a huge problem we've got. Meanwhile, the third base coming down for both players. Third base is going to be up for Violet sooner, so we may see a rave of drones. Alternatively, he's just going to get a whole load of roaches out. Getting the double upgrades, the 1-1, one, one, the plus 2 missile attack on its way down for the Cool Man now, who's banking up an awful lot of money, and that's a concern for me, seeing a 1,000 minerals banked up and nearly 500 gas. And obviously... He could just be saving that up for a resupply. He's going for some pressure, but of course, these infestors are going to be absolutely critical to the engagement. There are five infestors out. They've got a lot of energy on them. Um, so, of course, we could see some fungal growths as well as some good infested terror placement. But a good fungal growth goes down there, preventing so many of these roaches engaging. A great attack angle for Violet at the moment, but of course, the plus one upgrade advantage is there for the Cool Man for the time being. Some infested Terrans getting lobbed down. The Cool Man trying to come down to pick off some of those infestors. Gets one. Is he going to get a second? He very well may. But for the moment, Violet is pushing forward. He survives with most of the stuff. And well, that was not a good engagement, as you can see here. Over 1,200 resources more lost from the Cool Man compared to Violet there. Of course, Fungal Growth just so strong. And if you do... Fungal Growth isn't that strong if the Roaches are already in an attack arc. But if they're clumped up moving to it, well, get a Fungal Growth. Damage is done hugely. But more importantly, less units are able to engage. And Violet with a good counter push here. He has got the 1-1 about to kick in. If you just wait 30 seconds... 
Jason would have been better in my opinion, but he's trying to go for the massive numbers. He's using just a handful of Roaches, Great Micro, to basically engage the main army while picking up a lot of drones, and he's been very successful with it, but the Coolman looking like he's going to be able to clean this up now, and the Queen's even getting involved. No transfusers going off, even though there is the energy for one, so I'm surprised at that. Looking at the Worker Cow, now 59 to 53 in favour of Violet. Looking around, we've got a wave, a wall of spine callers coming down, the Macro Hatch coming down, the 5th and 6th gas as well, although importantly, the Coolman did manage to keep up his third base, so that's all important. Meanwhile, Violet is getting up more infestors. No infestors on the field yet at all for um, the Coolman, who's only just starting Pathogen Glands at 14 minutes 15, which, of course, that's a pretty late time to be getting that out. You want to be getting infestors a lot sooner than that, and as you saw, they really paid off for Violet. They are such a staple of the Zerg mid-game now that it's amazing to think once upon a time they were hardly used. Um, anyway, looking here, more spine call is coming up. I think that's nothing wrong with that. Violet up at 70 workers to the 50. His income should be absolutely skyrocketing, as you can see it is. That is great news there for Violet. Spine call is coming up here for Cool Man as well. The spine callers are good because they're quite good against roaches and then delaying the push, which basically gives you more time to use your larva to produce a good number of units ready to defend everything. It means you can squeeze out a couple more drones. They're relatively cheap because they only cost minerals, no gas. That's also a big bonus. That allows you to get more investors out, etc. They're supply free as well. That's the other important thing to think about them is they're building so they don't cost you any supply, which is always fun times. Anyway. As you can see here, we've got Violet getting up his fourth base. That's a lot earlier than the cool man's going to be. He's not in a position ready to start thinking about his fourth. A little bit of creeps going on. Um, cre the, the overlords generating loads of creep. Meanwhile, we do, of course, have the overseer just poking and taking a look. Not going to see too much. Hive not coming down for either player. The Hydralisk then, though, coming down for both of them. So that basically says to me that mixing in a few Hydras with the Roach Infester is super good. Just anywhere in between about kind of 8 and kind of 15, 20 is good. Just to bulk up your army's damage hugely. Now, in terms of upgrades, 1 1 is done for Violet, who's getting 2 2 as well. 2 0 is finished, though for the cool man. So of course if these 2-2 two, two upgrades finish before the next engagement, which is very likely they will, that is a big upgrade advantage to Violet. And of course when you're looking at Roach and Festo engagements, upgrades make a huge amount of difference. Absolutely astounding. Anyway, Hydras are available to both players, neither of them choosing to get any yet. Violet getting an awful lot of roaches up though actually. And if we look at the supply, he's putting really quite a long way ahead in both the worker supply and the army supply, which is never fun for your opponent. Looking around the fourth base is up and running, and it looks like now, and only now is the core man going to go and take his fourth. I don't know if he even is aware of this, and this is a fault for both of their play actually, is neither of these players have been keeping an eye on expansions, and that's all the way from the third when I first pointed it out. They really should have been checking where are those expansions going down, um, when are they going down so I can prepare for it appropriately. Because if you don't know what your opponent's doing, especially in ZBZ, you can suddenly get a wave of units that you just aren't prepared for. Now, obviously, the Cool Man is getting up there with a good number of roaches, but he's lacking on the Infest account. The Hydra account also there for Violet as well, which is really going to help. And Violet just starting up his Hive now, so he is going into Lake Tech units, ready to start the 3 3 upgrades. He's already got 2 2, and this is going to be a strong little force going across the map. This fourth base almost certainly going to get denied. We do have the Cool Man moving up, but he's deciding to run back, so he is cancelling his fourth base, and that is just brilliant work by Violet. He's the, he forced a cancel on the third once already, now forcing a cancel on the fourth. He's just staying economically at head. He's, what, 75 to 67 workers, so that is obviously great news for him. These Infestors just happily chilling in the middle, and this is a good position to chill in. Meanwhile, though, obviously Infestors are there for the cool man. He loses one, though, to some roaches, which you never really want to do. Burrow's done as well. Burrow isn't done for Violet yet, though. And as you can see here, the cool man taking the other expansion, which is harder to defend, just because of units coming around here, they can pick it off, and it's a lot further away and less fluid to go to. It looks like we could get some engagements in the middle, some chain fungling going down here, and those fungals are a little bit too quickly chained in my opinion. Just wanting to be safe, but as you can see, some infested turns getting lobbed down here, and a good amount of damage being done by both sides. Those hydras really, really helping for both players, but well, these engagements are pretty crazy. Violet chucking down a whole load of infested turns, just acting as a wall, allowing those hydras to engage a bit longer. Of course, hydras just so, so slow off of creep, but that doesn't matter because your opponent is generating it as well, which is all good. The infested turns, though, are going to die shortly. Some of these infestors do still have good money. And uh, engaging into this fine cooler wall may not be the best idea with Hydras. It's of course Hydras cost money, whereas infested Terrans, they are free, so you can just leave them to go and clean up. Meanwhile, these infested Terrans doing some good damage to the roaches. Some infestors coming down for the cool man there. He's looking okay. And Violet pulling back with his own infestors, just like, I'm going to run away. Not scared, but in a tactical retreat. And that is exactly what you should do. And I often harp on about it that it's really the difference between a good and great player is when they know when to run away. Because if you aren't going to be able to win, or deal any more significant damage, why lose units? You better engage more cost effectively. And that's what we're seeing here from Viola. 
He's only lost 8,500 resources compared to the 13,000 resources lost by the cool man. Burrow about to finish up there for Violet. And, well, he's got the 3-3 three, three range attack and ground armor upgrades on their way out. These infestors just doing some more annoying damage. The overseer there, of course, going to pick off the infestor anyway. So, might as well make some infested terrans just because it better to spend the energy than not at all. Meanwhile, this fourth base hasn't been restarted. Violet just keeping a roach there, which is brilliant. The fifth base on the way out for Violet. That, of course, absolutely amazing play. Manage your opponent's expansions. Deny his while taking your own is absolutely amazing. The Spire coming down. That's going to be ready for Broodlord because, of course, we're 20 minutes into this game now. And there's more Spine Callers coming down here for the Cool Man, who is turtling, 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 which is fine, and except if it goes on for too long and then you tend to lose. But anyway, Infested Terrans coming down. Some good fungal growths from the cool man and well Violet just loving those infested tones they're doing good damage but they're getting cleaned out ever so quickly by the spine crawler and hydras so that isn't something that you really want to see Surprisingly, this fourth base hasn't been scouted. Um, I don't know if Violet can see it. No, he can, but he can now see the creep spread. So if he notices that, that is absolutely going to allow him to go and pick that off. Because as you can see, with so many spine callers up, the, well, cool man, he is just happily settling down, turtling up, trying to play safe. Meanwhile, obviously the fifth base on its way out. The spire nearly done, about 25 seconds away from completion. The spine callers moving forward. The spine callers here moving forward as well. Both these players turtling quite heavily but the advantage of course is the Vilas had his fourth base up for a long time he's got a worker advantage if we take a look at the bar display of the income you can see that is really a lot more red than it is blue which obviously means that Violet is pulling ahead in the economy and as a result he's not he's getting a huge bank which he can't actually spend at the moment because he is pretty much maxed out but because his spire is now done when his greatest spire is nearing completion We'll likely see Violet sacrifice a lot of those units in order to free up supply. He's getting some good fungals off here as well. And there's no harm in just damaging some of your opponent's units for free because why not? It's always going to work out well for you. Some good free splitting here by Violet, trying to get the better attack arc. Cormac needs to be careful engaging into this area because obviously there's a much better arc of attack there, which is something that you should always be thinking about. A couple of units coming down here trying to pick off the fourth base, but the cool man may be able to defend it, but no, he doesn't. He loses his fourth, and that is a huge, huge loss. That could actually be game ending. Why not now? It could end the game in the near future, and it could be the, the cause of the loss because without that income, we're going to see a massive amount of problem for the Blue Zerg player here, who's also got some roaches coming and chilling at his third base and that queen trying to do some damage but meanwhile these two roaches just happily sitting there taking it but well fungal growth is coming down from the cool man he's going for a push he kind of realizes that he's got to do some good damage here otherwise he's going to run into some problems and Violet not quite quick enough in dealing with that and is now running into some of his own problems. He's got five crops on the way. His greatest spy is finishing in eight seconds. And really, these spine crawlers can be essential to soak up some of the damage, delay the advancement, just to allow those broodlords to come out. And I mean, once those broodlords are out, it's going to be very tough to deal with. You've got a lot of infested terrans coming down for both of these players now who are just going infested terran v infested terran. Seven broodlords are a morphing though. And once they're out, that could cause some problems. You've got some spine crawlers finishing up here. So this push isn't even going to be able to be too great there. The fourth base being retaken down here, but cancelled due to the fact that just a handful of roaches from Violet put an end to it. Meanwhile, well, this isn't looking too fun because, well, the work account, 59 to 62. Um, obviously, if we look at the production, so many Broodlords on their way in. The plus one air attack coming down as well now. These Broodlords really going to make the difference to this engagement. The Cormac getting 11 Infestors out, so obviously a lot of Infested turns are always an option. And um, Considering he's getting, well, three more out, he's going to be up to, what, 18? So equal on the Infestor count. But Vila with such a huge economic lead and also the tech lead, I think it's going to be really, really difficult for the cool man to deal with this. And as you can see here, if we look at the income of these two players, there's just such a massive difference. The bank is so different. And while they are both nearly maxed out, and this is really just looking so, so good for Violet. And the cool man is going to have to do something incredibly impressive. He's going to be able to deal with this. A burrow goes down on those infestors for the time being. And as you can see, Violet pulling back to defend his fifth base. That's probably his most important base. Now he's got a good number of spine crawlers around here. So he can be quite defensive. The broodlords raining down broodlings from the sky. That's going to start causing problems. And of course, if those broodling walls start getting up too much, there can be problems. But of course, a lot of infested Terrans on their way down. And well, infested Terrans with counted by infested Terrans. This is all getting pretty crazy. The broodlords do need to be careful though, because there are quite a few hydras in there. They're engaging over the rocks, preventing the hydras from being able to engage too well, which is a brilliant play by Violet. And as you can see, the cool man losing a load of money. And GG well played out of the blue Zerg, allowing Violet to take the game. Because when you've got that many Broodlords, and you're just trying to engage them with like a couple of Infested Terran and Hydra, you're not going to be able to win that game. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please subscribe, like the video, leave a cool comment, follow me on Twitter. But most importantly, check back tomorrow for yet another new cast. And if you cannot wait that long, I don't blame you. But 
luckily I have hundreds more games up on my channel, so you should give some of them a watch. Anyway, bye for now, and I'll see you tomorrow.